Good morning, Christian Mission! Do I sound hot this morning? Does that sound like it's... Is it okay? I don't say, did I look hot? I say, does this sound hot? There's a big difference. You're hot here. Shit. How, how many fingers do I have up? Okay, I don't know, it just sounded to me up here. We have a theme, be strong and let your heart take courage. It's from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life, whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though a war rise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. And be gracious to me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Last week we looked at in verse 8 where it says, Your face, O Lord, shall I seek. And uh, we went through what that was all about and the intimacy and the closeness and the presence of God. And we're kind of continuing on with that again this week in verse 9. In verse 9 it says, Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. We're looking at this morning, do not hide your face from me. Last week, first he commands us to seek his face, then we seek his face, and then we're saying, do not hide your face from me. Matthew Henry says this, in his commentary. He is very particular in his request for the favor of God that he might not be shut out from that, from God's favor. Thy face, Lord, will I seek in obedience to thy command. Therefore, hide not thy face from me. Never let me want the reviving sense of the favor. Love me and let me know that thou lovest me. Put not thy servant away in anger. He owns he had deserved God's displeasure, but begs that, however, God might correct him. He would not cast him away from his presence. For what is hell but that? For the continuance of his presence with him, thou hast been my help formerly, and thou art the God of my salvation, and therefore, whither I shall go but to thee. O oh, leave me not, neither for, nor forsake me. Withdraw not the operations of thy power from me, for then I am helpless. We withdraw not the tokens of thy good will to me, for then I am comfortless. So David starts off and he's and he's strong and positive, and we're praising and we're worshiping, and God's with us during the difficult times during war. And now he goes into a little time of lamenting. And all of us at times have times of lamenting in our life. Times of difficulties times when your doctor says you have lung cancer or you have and you know so many things we can fill in the blank here and we struggle with it sometimes and he's crying out and he's saying do not hide your face from me God I need you God I need you more than ever in my life I need you and I need you right now Oh, Father God, be with me. Yes, if I need discipline, discipline me, but don't hide your face from me. I need that close relationship with you. I need that intimacy with you. As, we, as it says in verse 8, it says, My heart said to you, your face, O Lord, shall I seek. It's a heart thing. And it's a heart thing with God and loving God and God loving us. 
And there are many times in life that we feel like this. We're saying, God, where are you? We go through times where, God, where are you? We just feel like he's turned us back on us and left us and walked away from us. He hasn't. He's still there. But sometimes, especially when we start focusing on the circumstances and get so locked on the circumstance that we're facing that we see the, the, the trial, we see the tribulation, we see what it's causing us, we feel the pain that we're going through, our faith can start dwindling a little bit, and we're not keeping our eyes on who God truly is and that He is there with us. And so as we look at the wrong things, the problem starts getting bigger in our mind. And as it gets bigger in our mind, we're like, God, where are you? Where are you, Lord? I've even had people tell me they thought that God hated them for what they're going through. And the truth is, it's the exact opposite. God loves us. He never stops loving us. And so, God, I need your face. God, I need your presence with me right now. Typically, when you get bad news about something physically, like you have lung cancer or something along those lines, it's not just a simple, easy, everything's always perfect go through. Normally in life we have these ups and downs and we're doing better and we feel close to God and we feel strong and we're good. And then something happens and we take a little dip and then we're struggling more and we're crying out to God and we're trying to figure out where he is and what's going on. So many times people start saying, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? I think the truth is, that every single person in this room is going through something right now. It's not all the same thing, but we're all going through something and we are all facing something. And at times, we probably all have our ups and downs. I'm, you, I mean, I'm very transparent in who I am and I have my ups and downs. I thank the Lord that he's with me through the ups and the downs. <laughs> And when we cry out to him, he is there. I thank him for that. Because as it says in some of the other Psalms, this is what we want and this is our prayer so much. Psalm 69, 17 says, And do not hide your face from me, your servant, for I am in distress. Answer me quickly. Psalm 102, 2, Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. In the day when I call, answer me quickly. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will become like those who go down to the pit. So all three of them are saying, don't hide your face from me. I need your closeness. I need your presence. I need you here right now. And they all have the same thing as answer me quickly. And boy... Do we want God to answer us quickly? But he doesn't always answer us quickly. Sometimes his answer is quick, but his answer is wait. Sometimes his answer is quick, but it's going to be, I'm with you, and I'm going to go through it with you. And we're going to go through this thing together. Sometimes that's what his answer is, even though that's not what we want the answer to be. And so we say, God, answer me quickly. I don't know, I have a couple people in my life who, uh, if I text them, I may get a text back, I may not, and maybe five or six days later. It drives me crazy. I'm like, I know you look at your text, I know you've seen it, I know you have time to respond, why don't you just respond? So we feel that way with God sometimes. God, I know you're hearing my prayer. I know, why don't you hit me right now and just say, Dave, you're healed. You know, we get even in stupid little things, like in, in, even in my life, which is a really minor little thing. I'm not trying to say it's not, but I'm allergic to the sun. So I try to stay out of the sun for the most part. And I love being outdoors, and I want to be out in the sun. And when I was younger, I liked being out in the sun with my shirt off. Maybe not so great anymore, but when I was younger, it worked. <laughs> And when I get out in the sun, 
I break out in hives with like these blisters and they itch like poison oak and it's hideous and I like wearing what I call thongs, flip flops and I don't wear them because the sun hits the top of my feet and then the top of my feet turn off all these blisters and then I wake up in the middle of the night and I am just scratch the top of my feet raw sometimes in my sleep and then you wake up and it's just going and it starts driving me crazy. There are times I would rather have pain than the itching. Yeah. And it's a minor little thing. And it's like, God, where are you? You're a healing God. You can heal me right now. And I'm going to share something with you, church. I don't know why God heals sometimes and he does another. I can't answer that. But I know this. God is concerned more about our character than he is our comfort. We are concerned about our comfort. And when it comes to me itching like that, that's about comfort. It is not comfortable when you just keep scratching and scraping. You can't get rid of it. But God's more worried about who we are as true people. And sometimes it's in the difficulties of life, the struggles of life, one, that we grow in character and we see how much character we really have. It's through those difficult times when we find out what type of character we have. It's through those times we start finding out what kind of integrity we have in our lives. And it's through facing those difficult times that character is formed and strengthened. We don't like the the trial. We don't like the tribulation. We don't like the itching. But we like the fruit of the character that it produces in our lives. We like that a lot. That encourages us. That helps us that ministers to us but we don't like the trial but James tells us count it all joy my brethren when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing James tells us to count it all joy when you're going in the middle of a trial Here's a time to start rejoicing. It was even the word given this morning. We need to be a people who rejoice. Paul says rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. I want to bring emphasis to us. Quit whining and start rejoicing. Now, when it comes to me and it comes to being allergic to the sun, so I wear long sleeve shirts. Even when it's hot out, if I go outside, most of the time I have a long sleeve shirt on and trying to keep the sun off me and I wear sunscreen and do all that stuff and everything like that. And life goes on, you keep living life. But when it comes to what's really important, and what's really important is who the Lord is and who the Lord is in our life, and having His face be with us and being in His presence, when it comes to that, we can do that anywhere, no matter what we're going through. We can have His presence with us, no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through. Paul says this, the same thing James said, but in a different way. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations. And in other words, we rejoice, we exult in our tribulations. Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. He says, and not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations. We don't wilt. We don't cave in. We don't give in. We don't run away. We exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. The only way to persevere is to go through something. Otherwise, there is no perseverance. It takes going through something to persevere, to get through it. And perseverance proven character which is what God wants us he wants us to have the character in our life his character in our lives because we're his children we're his slaves we're his servants which he talks about here in the same verse too that's what he wants and that's what he wants us to be showing the world around him if all we did was walk around and show the world the comfort that we have they would say I'd want the comfort but there's so much more to life than that. Amen. I shared last week that uh, I saw that the lottery was like 
six hundred million dollars. I was just like, oh my gosh! One was six hundred, and one was almost five hundred. So before I left this morning, I looked just out of curiosity. Nobody won. Now it's nine hundred million. And what was the other one? I don't remember. Six hundred and something million, I think, something like that. We think if we win that, we can buy comfort. And I'm not going to go through what I went through last week, but you can't. I knew a man who was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, all four of his kids were not doing well. And he was really struggling, having a really difficult time. And just because you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars doesn't mean all your struggles and issues go away in any form or fashion. But, uh, the second song we sang, which was, what was the second song we sang, Mikey? You got the list right there. Honey in the, the, the Rock. And it says, Jesus, you're all I need. You're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. That's where this takes us to. That's where having character built up and starts taking us to. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're everything I need. It's all about you, Lord. It's not about if I have this money or I don't have this money. It's about you, God, and you using me in my life and being there and, and strengthening in my life. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 6, 66 through 69, it says, As a, real, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. So Jesus said to the twelve, You do not want to go away also, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. We have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God. There needs to be times in our life when we just turn and say, Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, where shall we go? You are the only one. And in the context, that's really what he's saying. You and you alone are the only one who have words of life eternal. Yeah. There's no other place where we can find it, church. It's only in Jesus that we're going to find what we're looking for. Until you find it in Him, you're going to be singing the U2 song, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And you'll be singing it the rest of your life. You'll be trying different areas and going to different things, and you won't find it. We won't find it until we find it in Him. And when we find it in Him, we truly have it. However, there are times, like I said earlier, we still have the ups and downs. We still have times of stronger faith and weaker faith. That's just part of being human. That's all okay. We remind ourselves. Have you ever shared your testimony with yourself? Do you guys remember Alana's testimony? When Alana was... Uh, in first grade, probably five or six years old, she was in the high school group with me. For, we were doing something. She was with the high school group with me, and we were going to have a youth Sunday. And I was asking the high school kids to share their testimony, and not one of them would share it. And Alana says, I'll share my testimony. And I said, what's your testimony? She's like six years old. Before I met Jesus, man, I was a loser. I was nothing. <laughs> well, since I met Jesus... A lot of her testimonies in church. She knew what a testimony was. And I'm going to tell you something. She was serious. She would have shared her testimony. She would have got up in front of church and shared her testimony. There was a few times she sang solos in front of the church. You remember that, non and Horrible. It was horrible, she says. It was amazing. You know why it was amazing? Because it was 100% from her heart. Yeah. Because her heart is so pure and so real before God, it was amazing. And she got up. And we probably don't have the gift of music in our family so much. <laughs> and she got up and sang before the Lord. And I'm telling you, it ministered to people. It spoke to people. Share your testimony with people. Your testimony isn't just when you got saved. Your testimony isn't, I just met Jesus and that's it. Your testimony is I got saved and these are the things God's done for me throughout all the years. Amen. This is where God's met me, where nobody else could meet me. This was, I was facing this and he stood up. I said stood up because Russ just stood up. One second, Russ, I'm going to keep going a second. One second, okay? 
is when we start sharing what God's doing in our life right now, and we can go back and say, He met me here, He met me here, He met me here, He met me here, and He's going to meet me here, what I'm going through right now. That's our testimony. That's who God is. Share your testimony with yourself. It's Bobby getting up and sharing, I had stage 4 breast cancer. And the last test I had were really positive. We're going forward and God's healing and the healing's still taking place. There's still no more work that needs to be done, but God's doing a mighty work. Amen. It's Mo showing up back to church again after all this time. Amen. Everybody wants to share something this morning. What's going on here? I'll tell you what, since both of you want to share, yeah, I'll give you one second. Be, be quick, okay? I'll come to you because it might take a half day you to get here. <laughs> I just wanted to thank everybody for your prayers. I mean, it's been amazing how Chuck's recovered. There's no blood clots anymore. His lungs aren't collapsed. He's breathing normally. He's walking. He's going up and down stairs at rehab. So they're going to put him on Monday to see if he can go up and down 15 stairs. And if he can do that, he's probably going to be home pretty soon. So thank you for all your prayers. I'm doing great. I have strength in me. I didn't know I had possessed because of him being in the hospital. He did everything in the house. Now I'm doing laundry and everything that he used to do. And God's given me the strength to do it. And it's all God. I can see God in everything that's been happening to us. I still have one more operation to go, but I know that's going to be a, a, a success as well because he's there. Amen. Amen. Hey, Russ. You want to meet me halfway or something here? I know. Most people don't go to church where we do this. I feel like uh, some we're talk show host. Don't we're just Come on down. <laughs> so I'm in my closet, talking to the Lord. And he says, praise me. I said, I don't feel like it. He says, what means more to me when you feel like it or you don't? And you do. Yes. So if we get out of ourselves, if we're already dead and we just lay down and let it come out, he'll come in. So it's not about our attitude. It's where we go. Amen. 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 Praising and worshiping and rejoicing is a choice that you make. God doesn't do it because he has a huge ego and he needs to hear you. He tells you to rejoice and praise and worship because he placed it in you, the need to do that. And you will find out when it comes to God, when he tells you to do something, it's always for your good. It's always. So when he says rejoice always, again, I say rejoice and you start rejoicing, it's going to affect you in a positive way. Because there's honey in the rock, the song that we sing. You know, bees will make their hives and rocks. And as we you sing the song after that, Jesus is the rock, he is our foundation. There's honey in Jesus. There's honey in the rock. It reminds me of back when they were at war, who was the king who said, nobody eat anything or touch anything? Solomon said that, and then they dipped their saw. And who dipped their their sword tip and it took the honey and started getting revived? I can't remember my mind's playing. What? Nobody remembers. It's okay. Jonathan? Was it Jonathan? This, okay, Jonathan, thank you. And he said we should have taken it and we should have given it to everybody. We would have wiped them out and won the war, right? There's honey in the rock, church. Go get the honey out in the rock. Spend time. His, he won't turn his face away from us. He will not leave us nor forsake us. Sorry, I keep dropping the mic. I'm using my hands too much. <laughs> Run back. Get the honey out of the rock. It's there for us. We need it. Where else can I go? Where else should I? There's no other place to go. There's no other place to turn. Run to him. Run back into his arms. If you feel like God is out of your life right now, it's because you ran away from him, not because he ran away from you. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, He's in you right now. If the Holy Spirit's in you, then Jesus is in you right now. He's there. He's going through this difficult trial with you. He's making it through it with you. So go back. Spend time and look back in His face, which we looked in. Your face, O oh Lord, I shall seek. Spend time in His presence. Spend time with Him. When we feel like God's not there, it's normally because fellowship has been broken. 
You've heard me say, our relationship with God is never broken. Once you are a child, once you invite him in, that relationship is never broken. But the sweet fellowship, the intimacy gets broken. When we sin, the fellowship gets broken. When we turn our back on God, the fellowship gets broken. So God gives us an answer to it. It's a very simple answer. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> that's uh, 1 John. I think that's um, verse 9, I think. I have it in my notes. I was going to read all of it, but for time I'm not going to now. The relationship stays intact. The fellowship is broken. In the Reed family, there are times that maybe we have an issue. We have an argument about something. The relationship's broken. Sometimes the fellowship gets broken a little bit for a little bit. You have to go back and then we say we're sorry and we work through it and get back. It's just part of life. God understands that. So we confess it. He He wipes away our sin. He, 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 he What's the word I'm looking for? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us. So when you're forgiven, remember you've been cleansed. Because Satan tries to say you're still dirty and you're still not worthy. That's not what God's word says. God says you are worthy because I've washed you. Because that's the relationship that we have. And then I'm going to close with this. It's something I looked out for a second last week, but I'm just going to close with it. It's uh, Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We have a tendency to live our lives in such a way that we make our plans, and James talks about this in James chapter 4 at the end of the chapter. We make our plans and say, I'm going to go do this and go do that and go do this and go do that. And he says... That's not what you're supposed to do. We should ask God if I'm supposed to go do this. Don't go tell God your plans. Inquire of God. God, what do you want me to do? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We have a tendency to think to seek Jesus and his face last. It's like we've done everything else, and now we just go to him, and he's our last thing that we cry out to. It's to be just the opposite. Seek first Amen. the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, and then all these things out there talking about before there, you know, the clothing and everything. That that'll be added to you. Don't worry about that stuff. He'll take care of that for us. Seek him first. Seek him in everything. Seek him in the big um, big areas of life. Seek him in the small. Seek him in the big issues and the small issues. Seek him in everything. Seek him first. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. It's another place where it says you're going to have trouble in this world. Each day has enough of its own. It's going to be there. It's okay. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll go through it with us. Rejoice through it. Rejoice sometimes just out loud, even driving down the freeway. Just start rejoicing to the Lord and singing out to Him. Praying, crying out, worshiping Him. <coughs> He's not going to remove His face from you. He's going to stay with you. Stay with Him and walk in the victory that He provided for us at the cross. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank You, Lord. We thank You, Lord, that Chuck is doing so much better. And uh, thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that you have healing for Jr. And uh, that you're with him, Father. And I thank you for this. Father, your word never goes, comes back void. And we thank you for that, Lord. And I pray, Lord, even um, as your word went forth this morning, that we'll take it, we'll live it, we'll share it with those around us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you're always with us. Thank you for that so much, Father. And while everybody's praying and everybody has their eyes closed, maybe there's somebody here who's never accepted the Lord. Maybe you've never even heard of Jesus, but you feel that tugging in your heart. And you've never felt this tugging before. That's the Holy Spirit. He's tugging in your heart because He wants relationship with you. 
but I'll only have relationship with you if you invite him in. And if you want to invite Jesus in today, I just want you to stand up and walk down to the front of the church. We can pray together. You can invite him in. It'll be the best decision you ever make. Anybody here would like to do that this morning? Well then, Father, I pray that every person knows you and does have a personal relationship with you. And I, Father, I pray that we take this message and we share it with those around us, Father. But if you're watching me on YouTube and you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you would like to this morning, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I sin all the time. I confess my sin to you. I repent. I turn away from my sin. I invite you into my life. Come in. I want that close, intimate fellowship with you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live this life that you've called me to live for you. Thank you that you've washed me white as snow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and worship him. Amen.